Welcome, everybody. Um, this is Bridging Argo Notifications. I am Andre Marcelo Tanner, and with my colleague, Alistair Israel, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, but we'll access him via live power of video recording. So um, quick about us, we are staff uh, engineers. We are based in Toronto, Canada, also previously from the Philippines. So we're representing. If we're available in these Slack groups, in case you are there, look us up. Um, we work for a company called Ada. They're an AI customer agent company. And the reason I'm sharing this is like, we have about 75 developers and that we support. And you probably know AI is heating up. And we've been around for like doing AI for like seven plus years. But now everybody else is doing it. And we have to keep moving faster and delivering quality to our customers. And the story goes like we have this monolith. I'm sure you've seen this in your company and other places. We like to think it's majestic, but you know, it's, it's a monolith. And to deploy, people have to line up and deploy there. Like they have, they have to get in the queue. This is how it was before. Um, they have to get in the queue to deploy their code. But this is the monolith that's been in our company since the beginning. And you know, it's Python, but it, it provides the most value, right? It provides the most value. And even though we'd like to do microservices or other new things, we, this is the thing that provides the most value. And when developers deploy, it's, it's scary. Like they don't want to break other parts of the code, right? And they're, they're watching all their, their monitors, their dashboards while they're deploying. Um, so we wanted to like figure out a solution and, and be able to deploy and get things out into production faster. And among other solutions, what we wanted to change the paradigm is how you deploy at our company from a synchronous to a asynchronous pattern. And it wasn't simple, but you know, this is the story of how we did that through Argo notifications. And I'm going to start by sharing a short video of my colleague recorded of what we did. And then I'll, afterwards, I'll go into more depth with Argo notifications. All right. So let's go to the video. By the way, quick raise of hands. How many people here use Argo notifications? How many people here use Argo CD or Argo rollouts? OK, so you, everybody uses Argo CD and Argo rollouts. You are using Argo notifications, or you can use it. So just a little hint. but. Yeah, let's get started. Hello, ArgoCon. Alistair Israel here, staff engineer at Data. First of all, let me thank you for having me, even if it's just virtually, and for the opportunity, along with my colleague, Andre Marcelo Tanner, to share with you some learnings from our journey with Argo notifications. So first off, a bit of history. At Ada, it used to take up to 30 minutes for just our main monolith's CI pipe. Deployments were manually triggered by clicking a button and could take another 30 or more minutes to fully deploy on our largest cluster. So when we sought out to improve our entire software delivery process, we decided early on to adopt the Argo ecosystem of tools because we all know how great they are, right? But initially we wanted to mimic the same process that everyone was already used to. So we ended up adopting a manual queuing system to coordinate releases. But the net result predictably was that engineers would end up spending hours just waiting in the queue. We all agreed there had to be a better way. Like, wouldn't it be nicer if a developer could just mark their PRs as ready for merge, walk away, and just get informed later on when it was successfully deployed or if it fails for whatever reason. So we needed something better. Um, since we adopted the GitOps repository pattern, this meant we were pushing manifests to the GitOps repo, which Argo CD was configured to watch and sync and deploy from. But we needed to set the status of the GitHub deployments in the upstream project repo, not in the GitOps repo. We also wanted to send Slack notifications uh, both on public channels and as direct messages. And this was across multiple Kubernetes clusters, each with their own Argo CD rollouts installations and we did not want to deal with the complexity of opening up our Kubernetes or Argo APIs over the internet, across AWS accounts, regions, and VPCs. Now, why, did, why couldn't we just use Argo notifications out of the box? 
we quickly realized that Argo notifications, you know, while useful, was uh, inadequate for our needs. Argo notifications can perform simple HTTP requests or event delivery, yeah, but it couldn't be used to perform requests to query your lookup information, such as uh, determining the upstream GitHub, GitHub repo that pushed to the GitHub repo, or fetching PR information associated with a commit, or even just looking up a Slack ID given a person's email address. Um, it also couldn't, or at least wasn't obvious, how to perform a sequence of events. Uh, for example, to send a Slack direct message to a user requires at least two API calls. First, to open the channel and then to send the actual message. Uh, complex logic and loops just were impossible or incredibly hard, or it quickly became cumbersome and tedious. We were basically programming in templates. So in the end, we ended up writing a web service middleware in Ruby, which we called Argo Bridge, because it bridged Argo notifications with all the other systems that we needed it to interact with. It could have been written in Python or Go or Elixir, uh, but the initial proof of concept was in AWS Lambda, so we went with a more likely runtime. Uh, but as with anything, once you put it into production, it becomes operational and you need to support and maintain it for the next couple of years. And we've been adding more and more functionality to it in response to our user requests. All right, uh, so that is part one. But I wanted to give a quick recap while we're going through that. Uh, so we basically wanted to do really complex or what we thought was complex notifications. And we didn't want to do those in just YAML or we didn't see the feature set of notifications that could do what we needed. And so we, we basically built our own webhook service that takes in events and then does things in code. We call that Argo Bridge. Um, we're, not, we're not releasing it technically, but it's, we build this in-house. It's sort of like a, a hack days project kind of thing, but um, it was so useful that we ended up using it. And instead of putting all the logic in our in notifications, because we were also taking notifications from Argo CD and Argo rollouts, and then using that to send more like useful information to our developers, we put that as code in a service that's you know actual code. Uh, so, but what was the effect? What happened after that? Did it work? Um, so one more short video from Alistair, and then we'll go to Argo notifications. So how are we now at Beta, and how has the developer experience and overall software delivery improved? The biggest win that we consider is uh, the paradigm shift from sync to async. We said goodbye to the merge queue of highly synchronous and manually and orchestrated deployments and embraced fully asynchronous, continuous, and progressive, progressive delivery with Argo CD and Argo robots. We're now sending enriched, context-sensitive, and threaded Slack notifications. We're also able to send direct messages to users on actionable alerts and information. And this has quickly become popular as a company-wide or even personal deployment. We've increased the total number of deployments per day, but while at the same time, reducing our pipeline times from an average of around one hour to these days around sub 10 minutes. Now, before we ended up where we are now, we did try a couple of other approaches. And notably, if you ask the Argo folks, they probably direct you to Argo workflows and events for anything more complex than payload delivery. We did an early proof of concept using these, and we, while we think everything we ended up doing was entirely possible in Argo workflows and events, we quickly came to the realization that we still end up programming in YAML, and everyone knows how that is. Um, so we elected to use a general purpose programming language instead with more mature testing libraries and frameworks. We also considered front loading all information we could and adding them as annotations to the Kubernetes objects. This is also viable, but this also meant performing all computation and information lookup in GitHub Actions, more YAML up front, and we still have to deal with the complexities of loops and nested conditionals in our templates. Now, we've learned quite a bit since putting this into production for over a year now. 
we realized that, yes, we could still use simple Argo no notifications to post events in Datadog. This not only provided a mechanism to better observe the behavior and sequence of events of our Argo rollouts and services, it acted as a fallback when troubleshooting our own notifications bridge. So if it's entirely possible using Argo notifications, please use that. If not, and if you're capable, build it and submit a PR to the Argo project. We realized that copying and pasting inevitably introduces errors across triggers, subscriptions, and templates in, in many different places. And all this makes it everything harder to troubleshoot. Uh, so by relying on Argo, Argo notifications for simple event delivery, we could then concentrate our maintenance and debugging on a single service. Uh, as mentioned, we initially, while well, we used to send Slack messages for every event on every cluster to multiple channels sometimes, this just created noise and we learned to start threading our event notifications uh, based on user feedback. And the way my colleague Andre did this was quite clever. Instead of maintaining state in our service, we used Slack as a source of state. We were able to keep our bridge itself stateless and simpler to maintain. And this was met with a lot of approval all around. So now our engineers are saying, just a rollout succeeded message is enough, and we're doing that to aggregate that for all deployments, however, would require maintaining state, and so that's probably where we're going next. So once again, this has been a pleasure. Uh, Alistair Israel here, thanking all of you at ArgoCoin and wishing you a good day. All right, thank you, Alistair, for that. Um, so what I want to emphasize here is we actually managed to, with this in our webhook service and Argo notifications, shift the paradigm of our developers from synchronous to asynchronous, where you no longer watch your deployment um, for an hour or 30 minutes, waiting for it to succeed or fail. You, 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 you committed your code. And then you went and did something else, and then you get the notifications when it's actually deploying because Kubernetes, Argo CD, Argo Rollout, it's all asynchronous, right? And trying to put synchronous workflows into that is really hard. We tried. Like, we tried sticking synchronicity into our GitHub pipelines and trying to watch for deployments. It works, but it fails a lot. And so really shifting the mindset to just wait for the notifications, and then it'll tell you if you need to do something about it, really worked. And now it became only about making sure we deliver the right notifications at the right time. So we ended up delivering too many notifications, and then we got complaints of like, you know, make them more clear. So different problem, but it's a better problem than like, please make the synchronous pipeline tell me if it's working or not, right? So, and there were other changes also to reduce the thing, but. If you have big monoliths, if you think about it, the more deployments you have, the more contributions to that a central code base, single deployment pipeline, you're going to end up having to batch code. Deployments will take long. If you do canary deploys, you can't really like make many small deploys. You end up having, like their deploys will eventually go out. So notifications are the best way to get that, um, be able to like, reduce the cognitive load and move forward with whatever other tasks folks want to work on. And um, yeah, it's really successful. Um, and, uh, about, and this is just an example where we pushed it into Datadog because that's our observability platform. Um, it made it also easier for us to then do other things with this data um, rather than searching through notification logs of when different notifications went out. So. The other portion of this talk is like, what is notifications, right? And hopefully, so Argo Notifications Engine is a sub-project under Argo Proj. It is actually a Go library that's being used by both Argo CD and Argo Rollouts. Um, it supports a ton of services and probably more. And you can see webhooks over there. That's what we use to do our service. But if you use any of these services, you can just use it with, if you're using Argo Rollouts or Argo Notifications, right? And the, the documentation goes into more of what exactly features is supported. So 
a little bit of a history. It started off as Argo CD notifications, and then it was converted into a Go library, and then it was merged, and then it was merged officially into Argo CD and then Argo rollouts from that Go library. So both Argo CD and Argo rollouts use that Argo not notifications engine library. Actually, any CNCF project can use the notification engine to have all that supported. Um, as far as I know, only those two projects use it. Um, maybe we'll get Cargo using it, I heard. But yeah, it's really a powerful notifications engine. Um, in Argo CD, you have all these variables, app, contact, secret, service type that you can use in your notifications. And you can configure them per application or per project. So if you want to have all applications under a certain project get some type of notification. If you want like a namespace to have notifications, you can use um, the, if you're using the namespace, Argo CD app per namespace feature, you can do that. Um, the thing about um, notifications engine, it supports different features at different, there's, the notifications engine isn't versioned. So if you want a certain feature in Argo CD, Argo CD has to pull in that version of the notifications engine. Same for Argo rollout. So in current 2.10.2, .2, there's a hash code there. That's the version of notifications. But usually you just look at the documentation because the documentation will tell you what features are supported. Um, but we're also working to improve the documentation too. Um, Argo rollout, same way. It doesn't support as many objects because both projects include the Go library and then use it in, in slightly different ways. Um, Argo, Notif Argo rollout sends a lot of events directly from the code, so it sends a lot of like um, on rollout failed, on analysis, etc. Um, it doesn't use triggers for for most of those, but it can you can use triggers, and it's it sends the rollout and context object, and then soon um, I heard from Zach that we're getting the dot analysis object, so you can send notifications with the result of your Argo rollouts analysis. Um, it also has per namespace configs if you're using the, um, there's a self-service notification feature in Argo rollouts and then that's the version. So quick for you, if you haven't used it before, this is what it looks like. You configure your services in a config map in Argo CD and Argo rollouts and including any private information in a secret. You make these templates and this is basically like this is what your users see in the various services. Like we have here uh, Slack. And like if you're sending email notifications, you can just configure it in a template. And this is all YAML. And the templates use Go templating. So you can do code in there. I don't recommend it, but this is why we made our own service. But you can do that as much as like Argo uses Go templating. And then you have triggers. So triggers is like when this condition happens, send these notifications, right? So you can, and this is using the expression language, which check out the URL for more on how to use that. So there's a, there's a trigger language there for how to do conditions. And then when you want your application or rollout to receive a notification, you, sub, you set a subscription. Now you can set global subscriptions um, in, the, in the config map or in your Argo CD application or rollout uh, YAML, you can configure per application subscriptions like oh, for this application, send to my Slack channel, send to this Slack channel, or send to this email, for example. Um, there are some advanced features. If you are already using it, note there are like functions you can use that are available. Check the documentation per project of what they support so you don't have to like do this complex logic. And for some of these, we, maybe we didn't need to write our own code. We could have used one of these pre-built things and not have to maintain it. Um, Prometheus metrics. Uh, we did not know about this when we built our own service, but they have Prometheus metrics. So that would be also make it easier to observe what's going on in the notifications. Um, when you make a notification, how do you test it? Would you actually go in Slack and, or check if the emails, you can actually trigger it via the CLI. So the, both projects have a CLI for testing the notifications. And also for, um, I think for Argo CD at least, you can trigger on a selector. So you don't have to, put in all your app YAML, you can put in your, you can put a selector based on labels and trigger notifications based on that. 
So what's coming next for the project? Um, well, just personally, we're working on a Datadog uh, PR for notifications. And we're trying to get some of the features that we built in our Argo bridge thing back into notifications. Sort of like, so there's less for us to maintain, but also it's like the things we build aren't unique to what our company does. So we would rather support those in an open source project than rather, rather than putting it like in our own Ruby program. Um, but these are some of the things we're, and then also at our company, we're trying to use more notification engine features rather than using the custom code we built. Um, there are in, in newer versions of the notifications and rollouts in CD, you know, there's a lot of new GitHub features. Um, so thank you to all the contributors who are sub contr contributing to that. Um, but yeah, um, if you want to see what Argo Bridge, maybe not today, but soon there will be some code, sample code up there on that URL. And rate, subscribe, click questions. There's a mic here in front if you have questions come up, and I think we have a few minutes for questions. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to know, like, what's the status of uh, the Argo Bridge? Is it like, all the code there is it like, ready to be used, or it's like, um, no, it's more like an example of a webhook service. So, because our, 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 the code we wrote in-house isn't exactly pretty, so we're, we're extracting it out and just making an unsupported example, like a sample implementation. Okay, but, but it doesn't look like examples. Like, I can like, look at it and yeah. the Yes. Basically, it, it's, a, it's a service that take, takes an event and then does something with that event. The, the Slack ID, like uh, example you gave, that's exactly something I've uh, like encountered. Yeah, we found the trouble. Like, like we know our users' emails from Git, but what's their Slack ID, and how do you get that? And so we had to do more stuff to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you mentioned that everything is asynchronous. Um, has it ever been a problem that, let's say, someone pushes and releases a branch, goes for lunch, and breaks production, and doesn't notice? How do you deal with that? So, yes, they can go for lunch. But I think it will be, it's more of a human problem of uh, your, your, your code and fix it. So, so as part of the process of also doing things to like move to an asynchronous paradigm in our deployment process, um, we put in like tools to like quickly roll back. Since we use Argo CD, it's just a git revert and you can go back to the old version. So anybody can trigger that. Um, we also put in more and say, um, also like, like basically that, like we have an emergency rollback feature that allows anybody to like, if someone broke the code, just go back to the previous version with a single click. And so that alleviates some of the, the worry around what if this breaks and I'm not watching it kind of fears. Um, and who does those rollbacks? Someone else who notices? So typically, who does it? Someone else? Of, of some super admin? Or yeah, at, at our company, um, anybody with access to, any developer that has access to that code base can do the rollback, not just the developer who made the, the commit. But we, have a, we also do have a good ownership culture where mm. the team or the developer who made a commit is responsible for their code. And when there's an incident, they will do the whole process say the easiest fix is developing a culture where people pay attention. Yes, I'd say, yeah, having that culture and also like, I'd say before this, there was also a lot of hesitation around moving to this asynchronous model, but we also did have the support of our technical leadership to like, let's just go for it and try it. If it doesn't work, we can always move back to the, the synchronous way, but we haven't moved back. So we're all good. Thank you. I think we're out of time. Thank you very much.